Campfest 35. Yes. If you don't already know it, you are all a part of the world's largest Asian American film festival. Let's hear it. My name is Bigad Shaban, and I'm an investigative reporter with NBC Bay Area. It is such a pleasure to be with you here. Thank you. Is my mom in the audience? I don't know. <laughs> yes, thank you. Mom, quiet down. Uh, it is such a pleasure to be here in this beautiful Castro Theater, and we are kicking off 15 amazing days. Let me tell you what's in store. We got film, food, and music, and featuring some of the world's most talented Asian and Asian American artists. We're talking about 120 films and events, not just here in San Francisco, but also in Oakland. And I have to tell you, at a, at a moment when it seems like war could frankly be declared at any moment via 140 characters, uh, it is nice to have organizations like CAM promoting dialogue and diversity. Let's hear it for CAM. So we have such a special two weeks in store for you tonight. And we're going to kick off with a very special ceremony here. I want to introduce Claudine Chang. She is a member of the San Francisco Film Commission, also founder and chair of the San Francisco Asian Pacific American Heritage Celebration Committee. And she's joined by Willie Brown, former two-term mayor of San Francisco and speaker of the California Assembly. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Happy APA Heritage Month. Yay! 2018 is a very special year uh, as we celebrate the 40th anniversary of the legislation that makes it possible for us to celebrate every month of May as APA Heritage Month. We, the stars are all aligned this year as we celebrate the 40th anniversary. We thank so much for uh, director, producer Diane Fukami for finishing up the documentary honoring Norman Mineta. And we are so, so happy and so, so proud that Cam, uh, Cam and Cam Fest have decided to move from the month of March to the month of May to be the main attraction of APA Heritage Month. Thank you, Cam, and thank you, Cam Fest. A year or so ago, when we thought about um, how, to, uh, how to celebrate AP, the 40th anniversary, I had had that conversation with our mayor, Edwin Lee, at the time, and, he's, and the mayor said, oh, let's see how we can honor Norminetta. How, let's, maybe we should name the day after Norminetta or the whole month after Norminetta because we were so thankful, Norm, uh, for your role in, in June of 19, 1977. Uh, Norm co-sponsored uh, a House resolution together with Frank Halton, representative from the state of New York, uh, on a resolution to name uh, the first 10 days, the first week, in starting May 4th in 1979 as Asian Pacific American Heritage Week. That was the beginning of our annual celebration. We thank you so much. Uh, and today we'd like to honor you uh, with the APA Heritage Awards for Lifetime Impact. And, <laughs> and we were thinking about who should be the best person uh, to say a few words about Norm. And we looked around and we found a very old friend of Norm Mayor Brown here, who said, who said that he has known Norm since the late 1960s. So, um, Mayor Brown. You could not have selected a more honored person, a person who has had an incredible impact, not just on the Asian community, but of all communities throughout California, throughout this nation, and appropriately in the world. I serve on a board with him. The two of us just retired from the board. And it was so many years ago that I met Norman Netta that I can't even recall the circumstances of the meeting, except it was a fast friendship. He went on to become the mayor of San Jose, a Congress representative from San Jose, tapped to become a member of the cabinet by a Democratic president, and then tapped to become a member of the cabinet in this nation by a Republican president. No other person has been awarded such an outstanding opportunity to demonstrate his skills and ability. And there is no question 
that his heritage has been incredibly important to him. On each of the things that he's done in life, and on each of the occasions when he's done it, he has always made sure that there was a clear understanding that this was a pioneering effort, an effort to demonstrate that the diversity that this country ought to be about was being evidenced by virtue of his achievement and the opportunities presented and his availability to perform the task with such great efficiency. I am such an admirer of Norm Manetta that my youngest daughter, Sydney's middle name is Sydney Manetta Brown. And so Norm won the award of Asian Pacific Heritage Most Significant Impact Person. You started the concept of making all of us aware that we needed to pause and say, what have Asians, Americans done, and how they do it, and what did it mean to this nation? You have defined that in the most dramatic and appropriate way. And tonight, the award is being presented by the San Francisco chapter, and it's at the film festival, which has been moved to the same month as Asian Pacific Heritage Month. All of it comes together, and you exemplify each of it. Congratulations on the award. Well, there's nothing that honors me more than to have a presentation made by Mayor Brown. <laughs> he, no matter what happens here in San Francisco, will always be the mayor of San Francisco. Sure. <laughs> sure, he was speaker of the State Assembly but one time we were having dinner here in town and uh, all of us came out of the restaurant and uh, Denny and I came out and he says, Manetta, you might have an airport. And he turns around and he says, but that's my bridge. <laughs> but Willie, as he said, uh, and I have been friends, uh, that goes back to a democratic convention in uh, Florida and uh, so uh, we've been great friends since then you know when he gets a happy birthday card from the board of the city and county of San Francisco it's uh, it's a unanimous vote and I remember when I was mayor I got a get well card from a city from the city council on a four to three and two abstentions <laughs> And that's, that's really the biggest difference between Willie and me. <laughs> so again, thanks to CamFest for featuring this film tonight. Thanks to Diane Fukami and Deborah Nakatomi for putting this together. And uh, thanks to all of you for taking time from your own very busy schedules to have this uh, part of your schedule to be here tonight to uh, kick off Camp Fest as well as to have the first formal, uh, what do you
what do you call, uh, coming out party of, uh, <laughs> of this uh, documentary. So again, thank you very much for all of you taking time to be here tonight. Thank you very much and enjoy the evening. All right. All right. Thank you, Mayor Brown. Thank you. Okay, another round of applause. Congratulations, Secretary Mineta. So I want to take a little bit of time to tell you a little bit about me. So I am first generation American. Anyone else here first generation American? Yeah? All right. A few of you? Well, so we're part of a, a you know, a fairly large club here that uh, understands some of the struggles like having to explain to your parents what a friend's sleepover was when you were younger. And they're like, what? Jimmy wants you to sleep over and he's not related to you? It's weird. Um, also, what it's like to have to pronounce your name to a group of people several times and then eventually just have to give up and be like, yeah, you got it. But they never, they never did. Also, for so many of us here who were part of the entertainment, film industry, even media, you guys managed to convince your parents that there were other acceptable jobs that did not end with being a doctor or a lawyer. So a round of applause to you guys. So as I mentioned earlier, I'm an investigative reporter. One of our recent stories that we worked on actually exposed how potentially hundreds of people here in San Francisco, rent-controlled tenants, were being wrongfully evicted out of their homes to bring in new tenants willing to pay a lot more in money. So it ends up leading to San Francisco totally rewriting their housing laws, new regulations. It was a big win for, for renters and for, frankly, landlords in the city in terms of justice. So it's interesting to think back while we were doing this story, you know, I had plenty of people sort of slam the door in my face and yell at me to get off their property. And I remember this one woman, specifically, while we were working on the story, she yelled at me and shared some other names I will not share with you tonight. But one of the things she said is, get a real job. And I remember thinking, like, I just kind of let, let that roll off my back. And I thought, what is it about my upbringing that allows me to just sort of, like, roll with those punches? And, you know, I thought about it, honestly. And I was like, oh, my gosh, I have my parents to thank. Honestly, my parents because for so many years, they also yelled at me to get a real job, <laughs> be a doctor, a lawyer. Um, <laughs> you know, in all seriousness though, my parents are incredibly supportive, all three of their kids, uh, and it's fun for them to have a, a son on television, uh, someone who's not named Stone or Stuart, and who's brown, so that's always nice. Um, my parents are really proud of all three of their kids and, and to tell you just how far that they've come. So I'm the oldest of three. The middle brother is actually, coincidentally, also a reporter. The youngest one is a doctor. <laughs> but I can tell you with like 99% certainty that I'm still the favorite. So that just shows you how far my parents have come. So a round of applause for them tonight. So we have so much to celebrate with you guys tonight and to kick us off, the executive director of CAM, it's my pleasure to introduce to you Stephen Gong. Thank you. Thank you all for being here. It's, uh, I just realized it's a mistake to have politicians and journalists precede you because they're used to really speaking well at a microphone extemporaneously. I have to read this. I'll try to keep eye contact. Forgive me. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, it's my pleasure to tell you a little bit more about CAM and the work we do and to thank uh, the many supporters who make our work possible. And then I'll have a, a couple of special shout outs also. Our mission at CAM is to bring to light stories that convey the richness and diversity of Asian American experiences to the broadest audiences possible. You can see our work and the work of the filmmakers we support on public television, on Comcast Xfinity, in classrooms, online, and it's especially enjoyable and important, I think, to share and experience these works together in person in a beautiful theater like the Castro, on a beautiful night like tonight, a little chilly, uh, 
but it's good that we're all gathered here to bear witness to important stories and to community. This is the 36th year of our festival, and as many of you know now, we've moved the festival to May, largely so that it would coincide with Asian Pacific American Heritage Month. Uh, thank you again, Norm, for helping make this, get the, getting the ball rolling on that 40 years ago. Thus giving us, through this move, greater visibility. But also, and more importantly, giving greater context to the meaning of the works we present. Films and performances that celebrate, illuminate, and inspire. Stories that connect, connect us to our shared heritage across time and distance and toward a future in building a more equitable society and a shared stake in the American dream. This move also allows us to connect more closely to the uh, more closely the stories we present to the many community-based organizations who protect and move our communities forward. We have more than 50 community co-presenters at CAMFest, and I urge you to continue to support and increase your support for their efforts as well. Now more than ever, we need to stand up and we need to stand together. Our work would not be possible without the vital support of the following partners. And I'm going to read a list, so uh, please hold your thunderous applause until the end. <laughs> I'd like to thank our presenting sponsor, Comcast Xfinity, and our grand sponsors, AARP, the Asian Art Museum, Boba Guys, and Tiger Beer. That's a nice combination, isn't it? <laughs> a boba with Tiger Beer. Yes. I'd like to recognize the sustaining support of our foundation and government supporters, the Asian Pacific American Heritage Month, the Corporation for Public Broadcasting, the National Endowment for the Arts, the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences, San Francisco Grants for the Arts Hotel Tax Fund, the William and Flora Hewlett Foundation, and the Hong Kong Economic and Trade Office. Let's give them a round of applause. Thank you. You'll note from our campaign, Culture in Every Sense, I'd like to give a shout out to IW Group and to our friends at Content Films for the work on the campaign and the trailer, which you will see soon. I'd also like to acknowledge the CAM board members, members of CAM, supporters, and donors that are here tonight. We love you. I want to thank the incredibly hardworking CAM and CAMFest staffs interns, the 300 volunteers that help us make this festival run so smoothly for all of us to enjoy. Thank them. Thank you to all of the filmmakers, musicians, and actors, as Begad said. Thank their parents for allowing them to break stereotypes and pursue a career in the arts. It's vitally important. Begad, thank you for joining us. I've missed you. It's really great to have you back. You yeah. <laughs> journalists are so important for us now more than ever as well. And as we know, a lot of journalists were involved in making this film. So a kudos to you guys for telling a great story. Speaking of public servants in the house, we have joining us tonight a remarkable group of Norman's friends, colleagues, and mentees if we could have the house lights up for just a moment. Uh, I know that not everyone probably made it, but we had quite a roster of uh, public servants and, uh, and the offices who've sent people to be with us tonight. So I did want to recognize, in addition, of course, to uh, former Mayor Brown, we also have uh, Congressman Mike Honda in the house. If you guys will stand, we'll give you applause and maybe as a group at the end. Assembly member David Chu, Assembly member Evan Lowe, Assessor Recorder Carmen Chu, Mayor Mark Farrell, Supervisor Norman Yee, Supervisor Jane Kim, Palo Alto Council member Greg Tanaka, from the staff of Congresswoman Barbara Lee, Jane Tapa, Jocelyn Yao, from the staff of Congresswoman Nancy Pelosi, 
Miguel Guerrero, Staff of Congresswoman Nancy Pelosi, Ali Wong, Staff of Congressman Eric Swalwell, Mallory Deloro, Staff of Congressman Eric Swalwell, Genevieve Jopanda, Staff of Board Equalization Member Fiona Ma, Noah Starr, Staff of Board of Equalization Member Fiona Ma. It's an important story for members of the community to become involved in public service. You know, we need, as this story highlights, the contributions of public servants who have a deeper understanding of America's potential. So thank you all for your service. Uh, that's it for my thank yous. Thank you all for being here and enjoy the rest of the evening. Thank you, Stephen. It's my pleasure to introduce a longtime partner of CAMFest, Trisha Coonrad. She's with Comcast, editor in chief of International Program Strategy. Trisha. Thank you, Bugad, Stephen, Center for Asian American Media, and filmmakers for the warm welcome at CAMFest. Oh, sorry, I'm short, sorry. <laughs> I'm fortunate to work closely with the CAM family, Stephen, Masashi, Sierra, Momo, and Don, on an ongoing partnership that really hits home for me. Being Korean American myself, it brings great honor to be part of an initiative that recognizes the importance of Asian American representation in the media and on our Xfinity platform. In celebration of Asian American and Pacific Islander Heritage Month, Xfinity On Demand customers can access a specially curated night market theme collection of movies, including films from past CAMFest films, TV shows, music videos, exclusive interviews, and a lot more. Just say Asian American into your Xfinity X1 remote and catch all the collection. I have to put a plug in here. <laughs> in fact, say Asian American anytime for an all year round Asian American film and TV on demand destination which continues to tell the stories and highlights of great Asian American talent. And in fact, speaking of great Asian American talent, let's get back to CAMFest. Thank you. Trisha, thank you so much. My paycheck at NBC comes from Comcast, so I very much thank you as well. Um, it's my pleasure to next introduce CAM's festival and exhibitions director, Masashi Nuwanu. <laughs> oh, thank you. All right. Thanks, we got. Um, hello, everyone. Welcome to CAMFest 36. Are you all excited? Woo! First off, I want to echo what Steven said earlier. I want to thank the amazing CAM fam. Um, I wish all of the CAM staff and board and interns were on the stage. There's a lot of us, but I am proud to represent them all tonight. Um, I want to do a quick shout out to our former, I hate saying that, former festival assistant director, Lynn Kung. Um, is she here? Okay, she, I'm sure she's here somewhere. Um, it's been a lonely, uh, a lonely festival without her presence, but I know she's going to be at a lot of our venues, and I'm pretty sure she's here somewhere. She just texted me. Um, <laughs> as we mentioned before, our tagline this year is culture in every sense. Uh -huh. And with our move to May, our goal is to elevate the immersive experience between culture, storytelling, and community. And through our diverse programming, from film to music to food, we hope our audiences really uh, experience culture in every sense. That being said, I wanted to do quick, uh, two quick shout outs to some programs that we have at our festival. First off, in celebration of APA Heritage Month, we have a new program called Heritage SF. Um, this is one of our most ambitious programs that we've done as a festival. In partnership with Boba Guys, ISA, which stands for International Secret Agents, Undiscovered SF. Um, this is an all-day free music and food event um, on Saturday, May 19th at the Midway. We're expecting about 10,000 people in attendance, so we hope you all come out and help us spread the word. Our headliners for this big music fest will be Malaysian singer-songwriter Yuna, Filipino-American hip-hop star Pilo, 
Um, we'll have a lot of retail vendors and uh, food trucks all around. So we invite you to come out. Secondly, today we announced a crazy new program at CampFest. So CampFest is hosting the Crazy Rich Asians on stage conversation with director himself, John M. Chu. This is gonna happen this Sunday, May 13th in Japantown at 6 p.m. So we just announced it on our website. If you're interested, you'll get some behind the scenes looks, some exclusive clips, and you can talk to the director himself. Um, tickets are limited, so you can go online and purchase those now. All right. We do hope that through our diverse films and events, we can combat these stressful times by creating a safe space for our communities to connect, to laugh, and to dream. During the next 15 days, it is our mission to bridge and support diverse communities, pay tribute to Asian and Asian American pioneers, shine a light on issues that we continue to fight for, and lastly, watch some amazing and breathtaking films. Speaking of, I get the opportunity and the privilege to announce tonight's program. So you are all here for the world premiere of an American story, Norman Mineta and his legacy. You all excited? Woo! We can't think of a more powerful and relevant way to start CamFest 36. And I think it was in the fall when Diane and Deborah, the filmmakers, came to the CAM office and told me about this film they've been working on for a while about uh, Secretary Norman Mineta. And we initially were so excited, and they showed us a clip. And we knew instantly that we wanted this to be our opening night presentation. It is powerful, it's fascinating, and it celebrates someone that who continues to inspire people, um, including myself. After the film, stay in your seats because we're gonna have a Q&A with Norman Mineta and the amazing filmmakers on stage. Then after that, please join us at the Asian Art Museum for our opening night gala. Um, one thing I want to mention is that this film is eligible for our Tiger Uncaged Audience Award. So if you like this film, if you think it should win the Audience Award, on the way out, tear a ballot and share your feedback. And then after tonight, we have another 14 days of our fest. So please go to our website, cammedia.org. Follow us. This year, our hashtag is CampFest36. And please take one, two, three program guides on your way out. Um, and that's it. So please help me give a big Castro welcome to the talented director of An American Story, San Francisco's own Diane Fukami. Thank you, Ms. Ashe, for that really embarrassing introduction. <laughs> Uh, we want to also thank Kim for the privilege of being the opening night film. It, it's, it's such an honor and such a wonderful surprise. Uh, four years ago, when Deborah Nakatomi and I started um, started fundraising for the film, we got a lot of turndowns, and you know, you filmmakers in the audience know what that's like. Uh, we went to the NEH, um, and we were told that we came really close to getting funding, but. Norm Mineta was not exactly a household name. And I'm thinking to myself, what, how many people do you know who, are named, who have an airport named after them? <laughs> and also, w one anonymous um, panelist on, on the uh, jury said it was not sexy. <laughs> However, we had a lot of funders early on who believed in us. Uh, we'd like to acknowledge Dr. Paul and Hisako Terasaki from the Terasaki Family Foundation. They got the ball rolling and really started to help us build momentum. Also, Dr. Sachiko Kuno and her foundation. And then we have a lot of other um, affinity groups and people who are, we're, who are very close to. I'd like to acknowledge ARP and Daphne Kwok, uh, MUFG and Union Bank, and then some of our local friends here, Ally Telesis and Takeyoshima, uh, the JA Community Foundation, uh, Bakchi and Mary uh, Hackenbracht. Also, Quite recently, Toshizo, uh, the Toshizo Watanabe Foundation um, also became a sponsor in hopes of strengthening ties to Japan and providing subtitling so that this film can also be shown in Japan. 
Uh, there are so many people to thank tonight. I want to thank our production team, uh, Robin Mortarotti, who is our very talented DP, could not be here tonight, but we have the very talented editor, Haley Yang, and our production associates, um, Amy Watanabe and Camille Obata. And also, we'd like to, Deborah and I would like to thank all of the people who supported us, and including our family, over the past four years. But the person, uh, but the people who we'd like to thank the most are really Norm and Jenny Mineta. Um, we've approached them, well, we've approached Norm many times over the years, and it was only four or five, four and a half years ago where he said yes. So Norm and Jenny, thank you for the trust that you placed in us to tell your story. Now it's my privilege and honor to present to you the life of a man that the San Francisco Chronicle calls the rock star of Campfest. Uh, an American story, Norm, um, I'm sorry, an American story, my, I screwed up my own, my own title. Uh, <laughs> an American story, Norman Mineta and his legacy. Thank you.